In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. John. It has given me great joy to find that your children have been living the life of truth as we were commanded by the Father. I'm writing now, dear lady, not to give you any new commandment, but the one which we were given at the beginning, and to plead, let us love one another. To love is to live according to his commandments. This is a commandment which you have heard since the beginning, to live a life of love. There are many deceivers about in the world, refusing to admit that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. They are the deceiver. They are the antichrist. Watch yourselves, or all our work will be lost and not get the reward it deserves. If anybody does not keep within the teaching of Christ, but goes beyond it, he cannot have God with him. Only those who keep to what he taught can have the Father and the Son with them. The Word of the Lord They are happy who follow God's law. They are happy whose life is blameless who follow God's law. They are happy who do His will, seeking Him with all their hearts. They are happy who follow God's law. I have sought you with all my heart. Let me not stray from your commands. I treasure your promise in my heart, lest I sin against you. They are happy who follow God's law. Bless your servant, and I shall live and obey your word. Open my eyes, that I may see the wonders of your law. They are happy who follow God's law. Alleluia, alleluia. The word of God is something alive and active. It can judge secret emotions and thoughts. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, as it was in Noah's day, so will it also be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating and drinking, marrying wives and husbands, right up to the day Noah went into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. It will be the same as it was in the Lord's day. People were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. By the day Lord left Sodom, God rained fire and brimstone from heaven, and it destroyed them all. It will be the same when the day comes for the Son of Man to be revealed. When that day comes, anyone on the housetop with his possessions in the house must not come down to collect them nor must anyone in the fields turn back either. Remember, Lord's wife, anyone who tries to preserve his life will lose it, and anyone who loses it will keep it safe. 
I tell you, on that night, two will be in one bed, one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding corn together, one will be taken, the other left. The disciples interrupted, Where, Lord? They asked. He said, Where the body is, there too will the vultures gather. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Where the body is, there too will the vultures gather. This sentence affected me because I can imagine death that is not only useless but also a loss of dignity due to being eaten by vultures. Imagine if we were found unprepared during the second coming of Jesus or when we were suddenly called by God out of this world, surely our fate could be similar to that of the victims of vultures. In today's Gospel, Jesus reminds and warns us against false security, values and attachment of this world. We cannot be too clinging on the possession or achievement that we had until it becomes our number one priority that makes us forget our loved one, abandon the welfare of others, ruin our friendship, etc. When we are so focused on achieving something that we forget to take care of our health, we overstep the bounds and break the law, then all this will be in vain because we do not gain peace and freedom to love God and neighbor. No matter what our position, how successful we are, and how much wealth and cash we have, let Jesus remain the most important thing in our lives, and all these blessings will not be in vain when we spread the love by doing good and charity. In the first reading, John reminds us to live according to the commandments and to live a life of love. As our life activities and daily Iran go on, may we always bring love not only to the work we do, but to the people we encounter every day. Let not our heart and action turn to the worldliness, but always prepare in receiving and to radiate Christ's love wherever we are. Today is also the feast of St. Francis Xavier Cabrini, the patron saint of my home church. May her words inspire and encourage us, as she says, I will go anywhere and do anything in order to communicate the love of Jesus to those who do not know him or have forgotten him. We entrust all our weaknesses and hope to God, and may the Holy Spirit lead us and strengthen us to live our faith so that we may gain the victory in Jesus Christ when our time has come. Let us pause for a moment and reflect and ask ourselves, what is our past that hinders our freedom to express our faith and to be more open to love others? Let us pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure 
in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.